that's what I mean. Yeah. You're like hesitant. Yeah. But you work, you're so proud and sure okay. that you're doing something for the greater good of humanity that I want to sit in your body. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So next yeah. step yeah. will be a so just yeah. the way you know what form theater is. No? Okay. So basically, it's an interactive form of theater. What we do is we perform skits with everything that goes wrong in the world with open-ended skits. And we invite the audience to replay the skits in a better manner, in a better way, to solve the problem at stake. How could we do to uh, remove his riches from books and bring it to life? Yeah. They made a very rational, strategic decision about how to deal with the reality of, of Spanish colonialism in their land. And what we're going to look at today is um, the result of that decision. You know, the grant was a combination of the theater and the experiential part because we also tried to um, connect with people and connect with places. And so we did a lot of um, field trips in this class as well. And so it was sort of a combined component. If you think back to your experiences in the class, there was, there was you know, the kind of regular um, classroom piece where we were kind of introducing a topic and learning about the topic and then we would go out and explore that by going to uh you know we went to Tumacacri, we went to san javier del Bac, we went to the uh, mining museum um, we went to the central arizona project and so when we went to those places we also talked to people and we saw things that you know gave us more context and then we took what we had learned and we worked with um, Aurelia and Chantel and Abigail to put together a performance that sort of encapsulated all of those things and then you know taught the other people. Yeah take a, like about you know five minutes to look at your lines if you want to change anything and after that we can do the reading. What are they going to do? I'm going to change that to say. I'm, I'm pretty solid on my lines because I just have to describe what's going on so it's really up to you to develop your characters through your lines i need this water for my cattle my chickens my gardens my crops my life my life an expedition to explore the colorado river on orders from the united states president For John Wesley Powell, I just took basic like mannerisms and like uh, just pers personality that you like, you described in class, and I just completely made that as insane as I possibly could. What we'll do is we'll inject comedy and life in your characters that are already there. We just need to shape them a little bit. Does that make sense? I thought the body motions and the language was was really good. That's you know, how you would so that was good. We work 10 minutes on it. 10 minutes. So you improved so much in 10 minutes that I have no doubt that you'll be ready for the performance and you'll be ready. So my job is just teaching some of the content in and we're looking at broad themes this year. So this quarter the theme is about water and specifically about how water has shaped the history of Arizona and our state. So we will be seeing four skits based on uh, how water has played a role in Arizona history and politics and culture. Yeah, the Native Americans told us to be careful and... Like, ah, they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> well, he had all our food and all of our supplies were on that boat. What? 
screw this. I'm, I'm not gonna end up like that guy. I'm out of here. I guess we just gotta go. Yeah. There and there. To avoid that rock. Uh oh. Ah! <laughs> Do you know what this means? We gotta like go back. Now we gotta do it again. I think that it did give me a better understanding of history. I always liked when people said, when you involve your students in something, it helps them remember more. I think that is true, because when I'm involved, I feel like I remember more and I'm having fun, instead of just taking notes down and listening to what the teacher says. Not that that's a bad thing, like it's not horribly boring, but, uh, yeah, it's, I think when I'm involved with what we're learning, I, I understand it more and I remember it more. Maybe you guys should start coming in as she's finishing up that line so that there's not too much waiting in between you guys coming in and then you guys start speaking. So you should have, like, individual reactions for each cat. Exactly, <laughs> yes. So, like, Bernie would react to Ravi. I will react to scrim them and then you can get back. It did give me a better understanding of history because um, when you like have to like create jokes and stuff about all of these historical events, you kind of need like a strong understanding of the subject so like you don't mess it up. I don't think helped me understand history better. I think there was like a few times when it was like kind of cool to like you know, when we were making this skit to delve a little bit more into like a specific subject or like get like more details or whatnot so that we could have like, I don't know, I guess like a richer performance. Does this look like Transylvania? <laughs> Your accent's triggering. <laughs> but I went to college. College? You went to college to learn how to raise cattle? College? I can't even read. Stop. <laughs> 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 well, you guys seem like you're pretty successful, just like me. Now, I'm gonna go do this somewhere else now. <laughs> oh, all right then. That guy's weird. Yeah, he's missing out. I know, we're making the money. <laughs> my skin is too tight, moo. Come on, darn it, there goes all my moolah. Well, I don't think I feel so good. No, don't go. <laughs> Scrim Bim 2! I'd say that like really like the field trips and just like the stuff that we learned in class was really helpful because like we could like learn about all of like all of these like interesting kind of subjects and then we get to like kind of like visit places or see places that like actually where that actually happened and it just seemed more like oh this was actually a real thing that happened and it isn't just some words in a, in a text. It's kind of like a thing where if you were on, like, it's, a uh, traveling, and you could basically store stuff, like, um, pots, pans, you know, cooking materials and everything, and, like, when you stop to camp, you can, you can pull this part down and then get all your materials out. Exactly! So if you're a cow, this one was used in Patagonia, right? 
So let's say you're a cowboy on the range in Patagonia and you're getting ready for the cattle drive and so you're starting to pull all the cows in, right? You can't go back to the ranch every day. So they send this out to come feed you, right? What does that sound like? What's the modern equivalent to this? Food truck. It's a food truck. <laughs> so when we go through the mining hall, which we're going to do next, I want you guys to keep in mind that mining has always been an incredibly difficult job. It's always been an incredibly dangerous job. And for most of the history of mining, people worked for little or no pay. Dangerous. There was another miner, his name was Sam Aaron, and he recalled in his journal after his very first day of shoveling ore, he couldn't unclench his hands. And so they said, hey, well, why don't you work as one of these furnace men? It's a much better paying job. Um, but he turned it down because he knew that for the people who worked here in the reduction works, they were exposed routinely, day in and day out, to arsenic, to lead, to mercury poisoning, which is a really slow and, frankly, very gruesome way to die. Um, a lot of these guys, in order to sleep, would have to actually tie their legs and their necks down with rope um, to keep themselves from like twitching super hard. The, the most effective thing about the class was going on field trips in the hot sun and killing all of us. But <laughs> the first um, field trip was uh, <laughs> that was, that was a rough ride. That was a rough ride. It got it got a little bit easier as the weather cooled off. And then right when it was getting great, we all had to go in the lockdown. And so that's too bad. We never got to go to the copper mine, which would have been a blast. And we never got to go to the border, which would have been pretty intense. So I don't know. I feel like it was effective for me because um, I feel like sometimes when we're reading originally in class, I don't get all of it. So when there's a recap, I feel like then I'm like, oh, okay, so that's what happened. I didn't get that part. So I think the scripts were like a lot for me and a big recap so I knew what we were actually talking about. A really big part of like really getting the information stuck in your head was the skits because you could go over your handout, make the skit, go over with your like uh, group that you're working with and you kind of got this ingrained in your head. But I also think what was really helpful was the skits that were more in tune with like an actual story or played with actual characters or was in focus with an actual like story that we read or in the previous chapter and so you relearned it but like in a different way or in a funny way that was really effective Last time we, uh, what i would what i would like for you guys since the whole you? theme this quarter is about the relationship to the land that we have i would like for you guys to see if and how you can incorporate some of those elements of things like manifest destiny and the american view of nature into your skit of the anglos coming out Oh. See if you can do that. Okay, that that would be my challenge to you guys, is to, because they're actually they're pretty heavy on content. They're, what they're having a trouble with is creating characters mm -hmm. and scenes. Mm -hmm. You guys are really good at characters and scenes, mm -hmm. but I like for for us to put a little more content. Cool. Something like something yeah. really ridiculous while I'm holding my gold cup, like yeah. what what are we peasants or something stupid like that? I feel like peasants a little yeah. extreme. Yeah. Um, something what like are that. We, like, what are we commoners? Yeah, what are we commoners? Yeah. <laughs> and especially most of the immigrants that came to the US from China came from southern China, which was British under British control, places like Hong Kong and areas like that. Yeah, you have to be like, I'm tired of these tired of the British people running around everywhere. It's be like I'm tired of the British trying to tell me what to do and how to run my life. I'm a little bit of the who really doesn't like to like does who really who really knows how to like stick it to the British? Or whatever, yeah. who figured that out, or you know? Is the Americans. Is the Americans. <laughs> Amero! Go. See you, Mrs. Whipler. Clean my son's mess. See you, Mrs. Whipler. No, 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 no
I'm too fat for him to hit. Ricardo, don't move, don't move. All right. <laughs> 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 That's a good idea. She's calling to us, gold, gold, gold! <laughs> ah, I believe we have arrived. Oh, how nice it is to breathe in the fresh air of to get ready. Everyone's coming down at 1.40. So, um, thank you. You know, stay loose. If you forget your lines, it's okay. Just go with it. Freestyle. Have fun with the audience when they come up and, and do the uh, participatory thing. And uh, you don't want to disappoint Chantal, so don't screw it up. <laughs> you guys will be great. back to history in action. Ah yes, America, the land of boundless opportunities that have attracted people from far and wide ever since the glory days of its inception with the promise of freedom and prosperity. And yet, as hard as believe as it may sound, not everybody has fared equally in this exceptional land. In tonight's episode, we continue our program by looking at the experiences of three very important groups of people in Arizona's history around the turn of the century. The Apache, the Mexicans, and the Chinese. We will then look at the experiences of the Anglo settlers themselves, who followed their manifest destiny beyond the Great Plains into the Arizona Territory, looking for the promise of the land and its vast mineral riches. Anybody can be rich in America. Imagine, mother. Having 15 ivory cassettes instead of five. I could also use some jewelry. This jade's getting kind of old. Yes, much like you, Mother, much like you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, Mother, in America, they, they don't got to deal with no British people no more. They got rid of them, along with all their teeth. Of course, we'll be keeping our teeth down. Aren't the British people, or aren't the Americans just glorified British people? Shh! <laughs> <laughs> Shh! Go away! Yes, sir. Gosh. <laughs> yes, in the back. <laughs> there were like, she was like, who would treat somebody so badly and then yelling at the slave person? Are we talking about the Chinese? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. So we did not treat our Chinese servant very nicely. Could I have my Chinese come out here, please? <laughs> all right, then. So the servant was 
not very well treated. Is there anyone who would maybe like to come up here and play with our actors and maybe replace one of the characters to make the situation go a little bit better? Don't be shy. Yes, sir. Come on up. Come here. Thank you. <laughs> Why would you be 
more confident yes definitely I don't I'm not a big fan of getting up on stage so or like getting up in front of people so talking getting to talk to people and getting up on stage definitely made me feel a lot more confident to do more stuff like that anyone would really need to do anything different I think for me being less crazy is something if we did it again something that I would do differently being a little less of a spaz, um, but yeah, that's all. You, you had some of the most memorable characters too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I guess it's fun to act as the characters, like I get to be this evil rich dude or however he was, because I, I never really well, I probably won't experience anything like that. So it's fun to act as um, people and seeing how they are, seeing how they think, seeing like acting how, acting out what they might say because, because of your work, this is now my money and I'm gonna leave now. Getting, maybe they didn't say exactly that, but they were thinking it kind of. You get to say that now or like reading what they did and then imagining what they they might be thinking you know for me like the real the real joy out of this last program was just um working with the people that were involved and that really especially includes all of you guys all the students because i don't think that it would have been nearly as successful if it was with a different group um i think that we had i think we got lucky last year for the for the sort of pilot program because Yes, there were definitely people who were like not in not in the mood to be doing theater and you know, it wasn't an elective class. It was it's a required class to take US history and so nobody had a say in whether they wanted to do this or not. Um, but I really appreciated the majority of you who had this attitude of like, yeah, cool, let's do this, let's have fun with it and just took it on and, and um, weren't shy about getting on stage and you know, acting silly and so I had a ton of laughs and a lot of like really fun and like funny memories. And I also really enjoyed the freedom of not having as many topics to cover because that meant that we could just sort of explore things like, you know, on all the field trips that we took. And so um, I, I just had a lot of fun with all of you and, and with the people in the program. And I don't think that would have been possible in another class. And whether or not that necessarily translated into a deeper understanding of US history, I don't know, but in terms of um, community building and in terms of um, creating sort of like strong relationships amongst each other in the school um, that has then panned out into what I have seen to be greater academic performance and, and greater involvement and leadership in the community, I definitely think it was successful in that respect. Um, so for me, that's a win. <laughs>